Washington. When Leas, 24, visits his mother in the Paris suburbs, he's on his guard. He tries to be as discreet as possible. D'abord, je vais mettre ma capuche. Et ensuite, je vais fermer mon manteau jusqu'en haut pour vraiment qu'on me reconnaisse pas. Leas is gay. He grew up here in Gennevilliers, a town of 41,000 inhabitants outside of Paris. People around here know his face. And this young sales advisor has become the target of insults since publicly revealing on social media that he is gay. Donc là, il y a un garçon qui m'a dit sale gay. Qu'est-ce qu'il vous a dit euh, Sale gay. C'est habituel. Bah, il était dans sa voiture. In the space of one year, Leas has reported 23 physical and verbal assaults. On his mobile phone, he filmed the assaults and kept some evidence of this daily harassment. The two kilometers to his mother's house have become an obstacle course. Je passe pas par les avenues. Je passe que par les petits euh, chemins. C'est une stratégie pour éviter euh, le plus de monde possible, surtout les jeunes, et éviter aussi les, les cités, quoi. But today, his precautions are not enough. Ah non, il y, y a des jeunes. Hein. Among them is one of his abusers sitting on a railing. He allegedly made a death threat against Leas and is due to appear in court soon. He m'a déjà tapé, euh, m'a mis des claques. Euh, Il m'a craché à la figure, euh, il m'insulte tout le temps et c'est un peu le meneur, le leader euh, des homophobes du quartier. Euh, donc euh, je ne suis pas le bienvenu là. Leas turns back. Using a discreet camera, we attempt to question his alleged abuser. Non, je veux juste savoir quelque chose. Hein. Pourquoi Pour Leas, il vous accuse la vie de tout le monde. Il dit que vous l'avez menacé de mort. C'est un malade mental dans sa tête, c'est tout ce que j'ai à vous dire. Je suis coupable ou innocent, c'est pas votre problème. Okay. Non, mais on est journaliste. Sur ce, madame, monsieur, a, plus tard. a few meters further on, two young teenagers come to meet us. They know Leas and don't like seeing him in the neighborhood. En fait, ce que vous n'aimez pas, c'est qu'ils le disent. Non, c'est pas qu'ils le disent. C'est qu'on dirait qu'ils nous forcent à, à le devenir. T'es gay. Devenir gay. Ouais, ouais. Qui vient pas nous casser la tête avec ça. According to one study, 39% of homosexuals living in deprived areas have been physically assaulted. And they are not spared in other parts of France. In 2018, 231 physical assaults were reported. That's one every 36 hours. Arnaud, 27, was beaten with a helmet in Paris. Christopher, 26, was beaten up outside a gay bar in Bordeaux. Guillaume, 40, had his nose broken in central Paris. Like a virus, this hatred is spreading throughout the internet. At Stop Homophobia, an association that defends the rights of homosexuals, a team of volunteers track down homophobic comments and videos which are multiplying online. Faut brûler tous les cons de gays. Moi, si on me laisse là avec des gays, là, ouais, là, je vais tous les brûler. Vous avez le droit d'être homo, mais vous n'avez pas le droit de faire croire que c'est normal, bande de fils de pute. Nous, on en répertorie environ entre 10 et 13 000 par an. Alors, ben, Stop Homophobie va tout recenser et c'est envoyé à l'avocat qui va déposer les plaintes. Je vais venir jusqu'à chez toi. Je vais venir jusqu'à chez toi et je vais te montrer, t'as vu, c'est quoi un vrai bonhomme. Moi, je suis un bonhomme, ma gueule, tu vois ce que je veux dire Recently, they discovered a video on Periscope, an application that lets people broadcast themselves live. The man at the wheel is about to drive 700 kilometers to assault a homosexual he found on the internet. Quand je ferai un truc accro, Gigi, personne ne saura. Mais toi, je vais commencer par toi. Ma soeur, la vue de ma mère, elle était la plus grosse parlouse. Ma parole, putain, la bagarre, je la voulais depuis longtemps. Eh ben, je vais la voir, ma bagarre.
Tu vas donner des coups, je vais te donner des coups. C'est tout. Jusqu'à la mort, jusqu'à qu'il y en ait un sur le pavé. C'est tout. In this footage, we see him assaulting his victim, who will then be off work for 30 days. Et après, oui, il a cassé le bras ou un truc du style. Puis il l'étrangle, voilà. For this assault, the man was given a two-year suspended sentence for aggravated violence. Ce genre de vidéo ne fait pas que diffuser la haine, elle encourage à la haine. Aujourd'hui, c'est un étranglement à 700 km de voiture. Demain, c'est quelqu'un qui se filme avec une GoPro, l'arme au poing, et qui va faire une fusillade dans un espace gay. Voilà, c'est ça la réalité. In France, Homosexuality was decriminalized in 1982, but homophobia still exists. Today, across the world, homosexuality is still illegal in 71 countries. In 12 of them, including Sudan, Saudi Arabia, and Iran, homosexuals still face the death penalty. The Mullah regime sometimes sentences homosexuals to be hanged in the public square. Africa is the most repressive continent, where more than half of the countries punish homosexuality. We went to Uganda. Here, homosexuals risk life imprisonment. They are known as the half-dead. To escape from the police, some people have to hide in this high-security shelter. Every day we are, some people would find you on the road there and they feel like they want to knock you and kill you. It's a homophobia initiated and encouraged by the state. The Minister of State for Ethics and Integrity, Simon Lakoto, readily admits that he wants to counter homosexuality. You're going to the wrong place. Eh? You're supposed to be the female organ meeting the male organ. Of course, for those who are obstinate and stubborn, we bring them to courts of law. Similarly, in Tunisia, homosexuals are sent to prison. The state uses humiliating methods to convict them. The anal examination is, in theory, used to prove sodomy, but it actually has no real scientific value. This barbaric method is used in eight countries. We also looked at the United States, where gay pride was born 50 years ago. Gay marriage is now legal in every state. While on one level this gives an image of tolerance, Bizarre therapies initiated by evangelical movements are increasingly being used. In these videos, they intend to change a homosexual into a heterosexual. There's no scientific evidence that anyone is born gay. We infiltrated one of them. How do you know you're a man? Because I'm not scared. 700,000 Americans have gone through these conversion therapies and they live with the devastating effects. We investigate the roots of this homophobia. Two hours from Philadelphia in New Jersey, we find the small town of Ewing. Here, a woman has made it her mission to convert homosexuals into heterosexuals. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Chanel, a devout believer, has been married for 15 years. This graphic designer, mother to two teenagers, has not always had a well-ordered life. I was in a lifestyle of homosexuality. You know, I, I, li I literally was living in a bisexual lifestyle. I was with men, I was with women, and I was very angry about what happened to me. I was very confused. I was very annoyed. Today, Chanel has turned her back on a life that she says brought her nothing but pain. Four years ago, with an ex-lesbian friend, she created a program called Love Broke the Chains to help suffering gay women. This morning, she's meeting two young women, Alexis yeah. and Tanya. Wow, look at you. Oh my God, you look they came all the way from Michigan to meet her. 
All right, now, you guys ready? Let's come over to my dome. <laughs> this is the moment of the hour for you ladies. Yes. All right, here we go. Being both lesbians and believers, these two women are in conflict with their faith. Welcome to my home, ladies. For them, I'm Chanel really acts as a therapist. Of course, I'll let you guys have a seat. But you know, here's one of the first things I wanted to share with you. And I always pull this book out and also this image because people see me now, but you don't know my story completely. <laughs> All these pictures, that's where I was. Because I loved, I always wanted to model craziness. And if I was not married, then I probably would be a hot mess. Using these photos from her past as a bisexual stripper, Chanel wants to show young girls that it is possible to change. Alexis, 21, has been coming here for several months, but for Tanya, 43, it's the first time. So, uh, Tonya, so my question for you at this point is, as it relates to same-sex attraction, are you comfortable? There was a time when I was dating seven girls for seven days of the week. You know, I had a girl for every day, and that was what? my appetite. Yeah. So I needed to be broken free from that, you know, because that was, it was crippling me. It was damaging me, and it was also hindering my soul. She can learn who she is, understand her emotions and her feelings, give all of that to God, and let him guide her to the type of relationship she should have. Mm -hmm. So you found it? Yes. Okay, great. So Leviticus 20, um, 13, if a man lies intimately with a male as if he were a woman, both men have committed a detestable, perverse, unnatural act. They begin with a literal reading of a biblical text that is over 2,500 years old. The goal is to make these young women feel guilty, but the therapy does not stop there. This Sunday, Chanel has invited them to an evangelistic ceremony. How many are ready to hear the word of the Lord? I said, how many are ready to hear the word of the Lord? I said, how many are ready to hear the word of the Lord? About 50 believers meet in this small, popular church in New Jersey. Every week, they come to listen to their pastor's sermons. Whatever addiction, whatever habit, whether it's fornication, whether it's homosexuality, whatever it is that's been trying to take power over your mind and over your body, you have the authority to take control of it now. I need you right now to stretch your hands towards heaven and say, Lord, take control over it. Come on. Come on here. Whoever she is, Galvanized by his words, the followers go into a trance. Whoever he is, that think he got authority over you. You better take authority over it right now and say, I am delivered. I will not be a fornicator. I will not be a homosexual. I will not be a crackhead. Tanya is consumed by this spiritual fervor. The pastor will even help her cast out what he calls her demons. Let it go. I can't give up on you. I won't let you die. I won't let no disease take you out of here. I won't let it happen. I'm covering you. I'm covering you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, let it go. Let it go. Let it, there you go. Come on. All the members of this church belong to the Born Again movement. After repenting of their sins, the believers claim to be reconciled with God. Tanya wants to believe that this session will help her change her sexuality. Jesus has delivered me from sin. I declare and I decree that I will be in walking in a new, right new skin that he have created for me, Nothing the way I'm supposed to be. She was delivered, the tears fell, it resonated in her spirit, you can tell, you can tell, and this is how, this is with the evidence, the outward evidence where you can see God is working on a person. How did you like the service? Today, Tanya and Alexis are continuing to follow Chanel's program. 
strategy. But how long can they put up with this stranglehold that religion has on their sexuality? According to the American Psychiatric Association, the consequences of conversion therapy are devastating. Depression, loss of confidence, suicide, because some of these practices are particularly dangerous and amount to brainwashing. These organizations, authorized in the United States for adults, are very closed. All of our requests for filming were refused. In Philadelphia, we asked a French-American journalist to infiltrate one of these conversion therapy centers. The one we chose is one of the best known. It has existed for 20 years and offers courses of several days to homosexuals from all around the world. Their website highlights fraternal friendship, inner well-being, masculinity, and invites people to register online. Donc on parle assez vite d'argent, c'est la première page, c'est 650 dollars le week-end. To be accepted, our journalist had to first complete a long medical and psychological questionnaire. On demande si j'ai déjà été diagnostiqué avec euh, une maladie mentale, donc bipolarité, borderline, dépression clinique. Il me demande si j'ai un, un passif de euh, euh, tentative de suicide ou si j'ai déjà euh, menacé de me suicider. Just like for cessation therapy, he had to justify his motivations and sign an eight-page contract with shocking terms and conditions. J'ai signé un paragraphe qui stipule que je m'engage à ne pas avoir de relations sexuelles euh, pendant et après le stage avec ni les organisateurs ni les participants. The course address is kept secret until the last moment. Equipped with a hidden camera, our journalist, who calls himself Felix, has an appointment with a trainer in his hotel car park. Those in charge are very careful. In 2018, 15 American states banned these therapies for minors and are starting to closely monitor the methods of these organizations. Felix will be taken to the place where the therapy occurs. Two hours from Philadelphia in the countryside, our journalist is welcomed by someone who is in charge of the course. Welcome. I'm Patrick. Hi, Felix. 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 I need to see IDs from everyone. Okay, great. That's uh, Felix. Yeah. The identity of each participant is meticulously checked. Keep your cell phones, yeah. wallets, watches, cameras, any electronics. In the car. In the car. And you just make sure it's all locked up. Uh-huh. Your recreational drugs and alcohol leave in the car, weapons. Great. The rules are strict. Participants are not allowed to communicate with the outside world for the duration of the course. Hey. You're at home. He's right. in Florida. I'm Florida. All right. Yeah, same here. Felix. 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 Okay, glad you're here, Felix. Go on in. They're going to show you where you're wearing. Inside this former holiday resort, our journalist discovers the room he will share with three men. Welcome. Clean your bed. Okay. I've already cleaned my bed, so. The other right. participants, between 30 and 60 years old, come from all over the world. They are Christians, Jews, or Muslims. Some are sent by their religious community, others by their family. Most of these men are married and struggle with their homosexual desires. Well, I've been married for 14 years. Okay, okay, wow. Well. And my wife knew about my stuff before we got married. And again, I wasn't so much guilty. I was, like, disgusted in myself for doing that to the course begins with a rather peculiar ritual. You're going to get a man, that man right there. The course leaders, standing stationary and dressed head to toe in black, wait for the participants in the park. Go 
Grab hold. Excuse me? Grab hold. Why are you here? I think I'm here to understand who I am. Thank you. Go see the next man. Over there. It's getting scarier. Hello. How do you know you're a man? Because I'm not scared. See the next man. Welcome. I'm going to ask you to reflect and meditate on the questions you've been asked and the answers that you've offered. And welcome. It is an introduction designed to intimidate participants. In this room, everyone sits in a circle and will have to do a series of exercises for three days, including the baseball bat game. Now, the safe way to do this, Ryan, and the safest way to do it is to come straight overhead and down. The course leaders have convinced this participant that he is attracted to men because his father abused him as a child. No. And to it's exercise his program. anger at this abusive but father, he has to hit a punching ball. Masculinity is the weekend's keyword, a notion that trainers say is incompatible with homosexuality. Two of you to face each other, eye to eye. A little bit closer, to the point where it's slightly uncomfortable. Or here I am. <laughs> You're going to complete the sentence, I feel less masculine when. You will have one minute to do so. Men facing clockwise will begin. Go. I feel less masculine when I masturbate. I feel less masculine when I'm attracted to another man. I feel less masculine when I'm not assertive. I feel less masculine when a woman does better than me. Dozens of other exercises will follow. Role plays that, with this black sheet, symbolize the urges that imprison them, or drawing sessions relating their childhood traumas. Where sadness can move me through a loss, we need me to the other side of it. In depression... This brainwashing continues during the breaks. Volunteer supervisors, who have no training as therapists, praise their success. Felix, how are you? I'm good. Good. You okay? I'm great. I had to snatch out with man, but just, you can't just see him back. And I then began to look for something more than what I was doing. And I just kind of like, oh, yeah. Having done yeah, the work that I've done, that I, I realized that it's like, it's like, I, I still have all the qualities of this. I don't really want to be so great. I believe that before you leave here this weekend, you will understand. One of the key parts of this course is called the hugging exercise. The goal? To learn tenderness between men, but without sexual urges. The leaders ask the participants to think back to their childhood. Could you imagine that little boy jumping up into his daddy's arms, being held tight? You are perfect and beautiful, just as you are. This is a safe place. You need to let down your walls. Break out of that prison. How could anyone fail to notice This course is just one step. To be supposedly cured, participants have to come back several times and even for years, 
methods which are now denounced by former trainers. 3,500 kilometers from Philadelphia is Phoenix, Arizona. A former member of the therapy we infiltrated has taken up residence here. For three years, Roger was a participant and then a course leader. He too hoped that these courses would save his marriage. So these are pictures from my old life. This is me and my ex-wife when we got married um, in 1992. Um, I was 21 years old. That's a long time ago. <laughs> from childhood, Roger was in the Mormon church with its very traditional way of life. He followed a very conventional path. Married to a woman he barely knew, he had five children in 12 years. So this, holy cow, wow, this was Christmas of 2002. A picture of a happy family on the surface. My sex life in my 15 year marriage, I can actually tell you two moments, two times in 15 years that was like really great. Everything else, it was just very mechanical. Um, we have sex to have children. I did have suspicions that I was gay. I clearly, I started developing feelings, I would say, when I was in high school, 16, 17 years old. But in my world, in the world that I grew up in, that wasn't an option. We didn't have, it wasn't a choice. And I lived in a very small town where no one was gay. To help him fight his desires, the Mormon church sent him to this conversion therapy. We show him the pictures from our hidden camera. He knows the exercises, and in fact, some of them he introduced. I feel less masculine when a woman does better than me. This exercise was was specifically to help tear, tear a man's belief in himself down so that he feels like I have to be fixed because that's why I'm gay, because I'm not masculine. And then they go out thinking that they're broken. Roger considers the hugging exercise ineffective and ambiguous. They call it healthy touch, but it's incredibly unhealthy because it leads men to believe that this is gonna satisfy their wounds and it's not. They need their, their sexuality satisfied by being with a man. It's like giving an alcoholic a rum. Here, you're an alcoholic and you're having a sugar right now. Here, take a little sip. Maybe you'll feel better. That's exactly what they do. Following the suicide of a participant suffering from depression, he was traumatized. It was then that Roger realized these conversion attempts were doomed to failure. Where are the guys that are recovered? Where are the guys that are living happily ever after? Where are they? And we would ask the, the leaders at the, or at the meetings, we would ask them, bring one in and let us, let us see him. They could never show us one because they're not there. Today, Roger is divorced and happy with his new life. So these are pictures of, of my family now. Um, through the ages, there's pictures of me and my new partner. Right here, this is me and him. This was just a few months ago. He's the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. With him, like, I feel complete as a gay man. Like, I really feel like it was like, it was the last nail in the coffin, if you will, to shut my old life behind. It was like, I finally feel like what I found is full and complete and whole as a gay man, which I never thought could ever happen. Roger's three youngest sons know his new companion and instantly accepted him. Their father has left the Mormon church and he finally feels free from this social and religious pressure. Our investigation continues in Africa, where 32 countries still penalize homosexuality. We head for Tunisia. Here, homosexuals risk up to three years in prison, as in Morocco and Algeria. To convict them, the state uses particularly humiliating methods. In this hotel in downtown Tunis, Skander, a 21-year-old gay man, has been hiding from the police for several weeks. He has just been sentenced to two years in prison. Rejected by his family, he has no choice but to live in this room with its basic furnishings. Look at 
I'm Kassar Bullat. Skander's life changed three years ago when he was first convicted after being denounced publicly. Two more convictions followed. He has spent two months in prison and is afraid to go back. ثلاثة يوم نولاني نرقدوا في القاعة عبيد تنبز فينا تسب فينا خطر نحن موسيكسوال Skander was also the victim of a barbaric anal examination that is only carried out in eight countries It is supposed to provide proof of sodomy تقطعوا الأوريق وعملهم قبل جالينا دخلونا للبيت المنو تراكبة وهبطوا النسري والمعناها بالسيف وقت التست كيجي واحد فينا مثلا يتحرك ما يحبش يقعد في نفس البوزيسيون هذيك باش الطبيب ما يشوفش يبدا يسب اخذ غادي يريد يبدا يسب ويعيط ويكفر يا حسيتو اختصاب الطبيب على خاطر ما مانيش قابل انا وما حتى واحد يقبل هكاك In a few days an association will try to help him flee the country so that he can avoid going to prison The anal examination he underwent is considered an act of torture by the UN Human Rights Committee. At the public hospital in Tunis, in the Forensic Medical Emergency Service, Mansef Hamdoun is one of the only medical examiners who will talk about it and dares to question this practice. <laughs> It's here in this examination room that he receives gay patients brought in by the police. Il se met sur la table, donc on examine avec une lampe. L'examen de la régionale se fait en génie pectoral, c'est-à-dire dans cette position-là. Qu'est-ce que vous devez déceler dans ce test On doit déceler des signes anormaux au niveau de la région anale, donc une défissure, donc une déchirure. Est-ce que c'est sûr à 100% Non. Il faut dire que c'est un examen ou, euh, visuel, euh, mais on ne peut pas dire à 100% ça ou ça. Parce que même si on trouve une déchirure, ça ne veut pas dire qu'il y a eu un rapport sexuel. On peut déchirer le sphincter par autre chose. Ah. Donc euh, il faut être très prudent dans les termes qu'on utilise dans les conclusions. Nous, médecins légistes, on est gênés. On est mal à l'aise à examiner ces cas-là. Mais on est entre deux feux. On a une demande officielle de la justice qui est une réquisition. Ce n'est pas une ordonnance du tribunal qu'on peut refuser, mais une réquisition qui a un caractère d'obligation. It is an examination that proves nothing and yet sends homosexuals to prison. In 2018, 127 were arrested in Tunisia and many crossed the Mediterranean to flee the country. Skander, who has no hope left, wants to do this. Today, he has an appointment with his lawyer, well known in Tunisia as one of the most ardent defenders of the homosexual community. For years, Munir Batur has been at war with the laws he considers homophobic. C'est une honte. C'est un pays qui fouille dans les, les anus de, de, de ses citoyens. Ça, ça, c'est quoi ça? C est, c est... C'est une pratique complètement arriérée, pas seulement humiliant pour l'accusé, mais c'est dégradant pour l'image de la Tunisie. To prevent Skander from going back to prison, the lawyer pleaded his case with the French embassy. Sentenced by the Tunisian justice system, the young man can apply for political refugee status. Mabrouk, calmouni Sfara, lium, qalouli ala humatawk le visa, bishtim chil France. ماش عندك الحق ترجع لتونس راك ما دامك لاجئ سياسي في فرنسا ماش عندك الحق ترجع لتونس ماكش حزين نحزن نهارك باش يرجعوني لتونس مانيش حزين ديجا ما حط في بلادي مانيش وحدي مانيش مع الفامي معناها ما نتقلقش تو مازالك اربع ايام باش تخرج من تونس لازمك الاربع ايام هذوما تريد فيهم تقعد رايد ما يلزمكش تتوقف فيهم الاربع ايام هذوما ما تنساش اللي انت محكوم عليك عامين حبس على المثليه الجنسيه في أي وقت ينجم يخرج فيك منشور تفتيش هذاك آه علاش يلزمك تكون ديسكري يلزمك ما تخرجش برشا هذا البي دافيون تاعك طيارتك نهار الجمعه مع مدي ساعتين 
In a few days, Skander flies to Lyon. In the lawyer's waiting room, another young man is also waiting his turn. Every year, Munir helps about 20 convicted homosexuals to leave the country. Skander will stay hidden in his hotel room until he leaves, without saying goodbye to his family. A few hours before his departure, Skander's boyfriend Sabri comes to say goodbye. They've been together for two years. <laughs> Sabri's family does not know he's come. His parents are farmers and very conservative. They do not know he is gay. It's the following day, and it's time. Bonjour. The lawyer Munir has come for Skander. They need to move fast so he's not spotted by the police. Like every time he helps young homosexuals escape, Munir is worried. Up until the last moment, he knows Skander could be arrested. Munir will accompany Skander all the way. The young man is a little lost. It's his first time on a plane. To avoid attracting attention, we're filming with a mobile phone. There is a discreet farewell embrace. Skander now has to go through customs. Skander flies alone to Lyon, hoping not to be arrested before his departure. Among the African states where homosexuality is illegal, Uganda in East Africa is one of the most repressive. Buried in this small cemetery two hours from the capital is one of Uganda's best known activists. David Kato, a 47-year-old gay man, was murdered with a hammer in 2011. As we remember the life of our brother, David Kato Chisure, we want to thank you for the mother, for keeping his mother and even the, and, and the relatives. David's mother and three of his closest friends came to pay their respects. 
Gay activist Sam fought for years alongside the late campaigner. It was uh, an act of homophobic, uh, you know, tendencies. Because he was gay, and prior to his death, his name had appeared in uh, one of the tabloids. Back then, a law in Uganda called for the denunciation of homosexuals. The faces, as well as the names of 100 of them, were published in the press, triggering a manhunt. We were engulfed in a lot of fear. We could be targets of attack any time. In 2014, under international pressure, the Ugandan government withdrew this denunciation law. But homosexuals are still considered criminals. They face life in prison if they reoffend. This country of 42 million inhabitants is, however, one of the most dynamic on the African continent, with a growth rate of around 7%. But behind this image of modernity lies a deep-rooted homophobia. And it comes from the highest state authorities. The man leading this crusade is Simon Lokodo. He is the Minister of State for Ethics and Integrity. Simon Lakoto was formerly a Catholic priest for 20 years. His battle, he says, is in the name of religion. Vous préférez que je vous appelle Père Lokodo, Monsieur Lokodo? Father Lokodo. He is known for his savage remarks against the homosexual community. We condemn homosexuality in the strongest terms, and we don't accommodate it. It is only dangerous because it damages the person. In other words, you are going to a wrong address. OK? That particular type of penetration is not, is not like that. You are going to a wrong place. Eh? It's supposed to be the female organ meeting the male organ, but not using another position, which is, of course, for those who are obstinate and stubborn, we bring them to courts of law and apprehend them. Because one thing is to advise, yeah. encourage, and counsel. But if you are obstinate and stubborn, then we prefer to isolate you from society. So that you don't damage others, and you don't damage yourself either. Et combien d'homosexuels sont en prison? I have no figures, but no. quite a number. There are no official figures, but the associations say 134 homosexuals were arrested in Uganda in 2018. Repent for the of God. The Bible says today is the day of your salvation. The Bible says tomorrow's judgment. Closely affiliated with power, Religion is everywhere here, all the way to the streets. 85% of Ugandans are Christians, Catholics, and Protestants, and 14% are Muslims. There are no dissenting voices. All are united to fight homosexuality and support state policy. In the Muslim community, only the Tablai movement, a radical branch of Islam, agrees to receive us and discuss the subject of homosexuality. The mosque spokesman, Sheikh Amidou Mbasira, has no qualms about making violently homophobic remarks. Homosexuality? We can't eliminate it. Because it's a, a, a disease that is prevailing in the, though it's still uh, on its early stages, is uh, a foreign influence. It came from developed countries, but in Islam, it's totally not allowed. So if you life imprison them, I think it's the best way to deal with them so that at least they can have a fear in joining that act. Et si votre fils vous disait je suis homosexuel, comment vous réagiriez? I deny him. And I stop re re relating with him, associating with him. I stop completely and all because I don't want to see him again. Talking to me, sharing with me, and even the services that have been rendering to him completely stop there. This is the kind of hate speech that forces Ugandan homosexuals into hiding. 
On the outskirts of the capital Kampala, behind this big gate, is one of the few NGOs helping them. Its name? Icebreakers. About 10 young homosexuals and transsexuals are housed in this shelter, one of the very few in Uganda. Driven out by their parents, victims of daily assaults, they know they are safe here. It's very secure here. As long as you step out, we cannot do anything. But as long as you are here, we can protect you. We know our clients are safe when they enter. This is a Elvis, the director of the association, fears intrusions and police raids. So he has had a security system installed. This is the camera. It shows who is entering and who is getting out from the gate. And that up there, it's an alarm system in case anyone touches the windows or doors during closed office hours, so it shouts. In total, there are six cameras, two outside and four inside, connected to a security PC. That. These are necessary precautions. A year ago, Elvis was the victim of an attempted murder. He narrowly avoided the car of a man who tried to run him over. I fear for my life every day. When I'm moving, when I'm sleeping, when I'm going somewhere, when I'm in this office, when I'm outside the gate, I fear for my life. Every day we are in that. There are some people who would find you on the road there and they feel like they want to knock you and kill you. There's nothing we can do because we are not going to the police. The police will come and the police will end up taking me because of my sexuality. But the person who is trying to kill me is going to be left there. Icebreakers refugees have all suffered violent assaults at one time or another. Shami, 21, was attacked by neighbors with machetes, concrete blocks, and knives. He now remains cooped up in this shelter, unable to live a normal life. They don't allow us to get jobs. They don't allow us to access service in the hospitals. They don't allow us at school, so it is very difficult. For those who, like Shami, do not dare to go to the hospital for fear of discrimination, the Icebreakers Association has opened a small clinic. A volunteer doctor comes in to give consultations. Until five years ago, a law obliged healthcare staff to denounce homosexuals. Your blood pressure is okay? The law says if the health worker treats a homosexual person, they are kind of like they sh should report to police. If you don't, you're also kind of like promoting. This law has now been abolished, but homosexuals are still discriminated against by the medical profession. As a result, 14% of the gay community is HIV positive, compared to 6% of the general population. In Uganda, NGOs are under constant pressure from the authorities. We saw it ourselves that day. On May 17th, for International Day Against Homophobia, activists decided to meet at the premises of an association. When we arrive, a small crowd is scattered outside. A police car is parked outside the door. I'm afraid. Vous êtes effrayé? Yeah. Pourquoi? I'm, yeah, I'm afraid. Because the police had come through, you can still see them. And we don't even know how they knew we were coming here. Et c'est très risqué pour vous de rester là Qu'est-ce qui peut se passer Ah, vous partez là Pourquoi As a precaution, the activists leave. The police have spotted our camera and asked to see us. Hello. Excuse me? My boss is seated in that car. He wants to talk to, to her. 
The police commander wants to check our identity. En fait, nous voudrions aller à l'intérieur du bâtiment. It is paused for security reasons. Ah, why? We picked some negative intelligence about the about the function. After negotiation, the police finally agree to let us in. The Chapter 4 Association, which defends the rights of homosexuals, had planned a big party. But the activists have left, and in the garden, policemen are watching the premises. But the invited representatives of the European embassies refuse to leave without an explanation. So I'm informing you that uh, this meeting you had come for will not take place for security reasons. Oh, OK, yes, yes. Where does that uh, the order. order comes? No, the order comes from us, the, not us who are in charge of this area. That's from the police? It's yes. from the uh, ministry? Area police. Area police. Area police. It is a confusing explanation that outrages this German diplomat. It's a private function in a private garden with a wonderful setting, and it's not necessary to ask police for permission. But it's the red line, and police always interrupt such kind of events. Last year, Anti-Homophobia Day, organized this time in the streets, was interrupted, and activists were arrested. But this does not discourage the event organizer. These policemen should be chasing thieves. Mm -hmm. They should be chasing other crimes. But they are blocking a peaceful meeting of people gathering to eat and merry make and celebrate. So it's state inspired homophobia, state encouraged homophobia. But uh, that's why the day exists, we shall continue to push back. Despite the dangers, civil society is resisting. On this day, the young homosexuals from icebreakers dare to come out of the shelter. Okay, Dalek. Let's find the way, Dalek. They are Christians and very religious, but the church has also rejected them. In order to practice their faith, they go a few kilometers from the city center to a secret location. Yes, sir. This hotel's meeting room serves as their church. You are the miracle. This young evangelical pastor is the only one in the country to welcome the gay community in complete secrecy. Brings joy to my spirit. Gay, straight, bisexual, lesbian, confused. Whatever you are, the Lord includes you in Jesus' name. Here he talks about homosexuality without taboo. Most religions have used the Bible to terrorize homosexuals. The Bible is being interpreted and misinterpreted by most of the people. And this being a religious country, this is why there is a lot of phobia. But with time, I believe that people will come to understand that what we are doing is not promotion, but acceptance. By leading this fight in one of the world's most repressive countries, the freedom of this pastor and those present is at risk. They could be attacked in the street at any time. According to Doctors of the World, 44% of homosexuals have been victims of violence in Uganda. And now we go back to France. In Lyon, Vincent, regional director of the association Le Refuge, comes to get scander, the young gay Tunisian who fled his country. In the end, he was not arrested by the police. We are very happy, we are very happy to 
Geneva. Every year, Vincent welcomes dozens of French and foreign homosexuals to Lyon, and the association looks after more than 1,000 of them across France. On va aller directement à l'appartement où tu vas être hébergé, et puis comme ça, tu vas rencontrer ton colocataire, qui est un garçon très gentil. Okay. Scander's future apartment is located in the Lyon city center. Et donc là, par mesure de sécurité, je vais vous demander d'éteindre la caméra parce qu'on a la volonté que personne ne sache où se trouvent les appartements. Pourquoi On a des jeunes qui sont potentiellement en danger de par leur relation avec leur famille ou leur communauté. Euh, donc les risques, c'est simplement que les gens puissent savoir où ils sont. Some of their lives are at risk, like Scander's future flatmate who refuses to be filmed. OK, donc voilà ton appartement. Scander, je vais commencer par te donner les clés. Ça, c'est les clés de chez toi. Je te les donne. OK merci. Je te montre un petit peu l'appartement. The 70 square meter apartment is rented by the association alongside about 10 others in the city. Two residents already live there. Pendant quelques jours, en attendant qu'une chambre se libère, pendant quelques jours, tu vas dormir là. D'accord Donc du coup, on a tout installé tout à l'heure. Moi, souvent, ce que je leur dis à ces jeunes-là, c'est euh, oublie pas que maintenant, tu es dans un pays dans lequel tu as des droits. En tant qu'homosexuel, tu as des droits. L'homophobie est punie par la loi. Si quelqu'un t'insulte dans la rue ou t'agresse, tu as le droit de porter plainte et cette personne aura des problèmes. When we leave Scander that night, he seems a bit lost. Five months later, we meet Scander in Lyon. The young man has regained his confidence. Tu répètes après moi D'accord. Citer. Citer. Mimer. Mimer. Crier. Crier. He's been granted Crier. refugee status, Crier. and every week he takes classes to improve his French. He's a hard-working student. Et l'amitié L'amitié, euh, ouais. C'est quoi l'amitié La relation entre deux amis. Ouais, c'est l'amitié. C'est important pour toi Oui, bien sûr. Oui. Tu as pu te faire des amis un petit peu euh, à Lyon Oui, j'ai des amis déjà. Tu as déjà des amis Oui. Mais bah, franchement, c'est super scandaleux. <rire> Moi, je suis fière de toi en tout cas, c'est, c'est chouette. Merci. Since coming to France, Scander has let himself dream again. He wants to become a hairdresser and will soon start his training. In Lyon, he can walk in the street. He is no longer hiding, scared. À Lyon, je me sens libre, en sécurité. Et, euh, je me sens très heureux. A few days ago, Skander learned that his boyfriend was about to leave Tunisia to escape an arranged marriage. Every year, around 500 homosexuals flee their countries and find refuge in France. <laughs> 